anymore. Hey, 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 hey. Check something. It's not paused. All right. That's fine over there. Oh. What's up? A little warm here tonight. Am I complaining? I run to the craft store. <laughs> you need more supplies? Now I took a, na a nap this afternoon, very short nap, and I'm like, like I woke up and I'm sweating, and I'm like, oh, I I had the one window open and I had the fans going. And I was like, so I open up more windows, and I'm like, oh, that's a lot better. I think it's because of the evening and the sun beating down on the house warms everything up. So, uh, what do you need at the craft store? Do I dare ask? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I've had my uh, the one window here open for a while now. Did you know it gets warm up here? Things or things? Oh, okay. Well, we'll have to make a, a trip. <laughs> Shush, Grammy. Shush. I've got, okay, I have a, I have a list of things for tomorrow that need to be get get done. So and they're non stream related. And that is one of them. I was going to say that last night, but decided against it. Shush. Okay, now my glasses are all... Yes, peony cages are on the list. I gotta clean the bathroom. Hey, Crojo. Mojo. Gotta put the Christmas decorations in the attic. There's a couple other things, but anyway. Did everybody see the post I made in the Discord the other day um, about the marathon when I reach 100 subscribers for the marathon stream? Um, on that stream, I will be doing a blanket. And that blanket will be do donated to the Linus Project. So there's all information in there. All right. So. Decided I'm donating one of my... Yes. Nice. Okay. Oh, uh, I guess we can get into tonight's stream, if that's all right with everybody. Let me just double check. Okay, we're doing the Lark's foot stitch tonight. How close are you to, close to that are you? Oh, meaning her whip. Get my yarn all together. So, if anybody's crocheting along with me, I'm. Oh, your marathon stream? Oh, okay. I need five more followers before I reach a hundred. Once I reach a hundred, then then I will determine what day I'm going to do the, the marathon on. And the marathon will not be a regular scheduled day. It's not gonna be during. It's not gonna be during Granny Week, obviously next week. Which I hope everybody's excited for Granny Week. 
And it's not going to be on our usual scheduled evenings. It'll be an extra bonus stream for whenever that shall be. Okay. No cow on the jewels. Do I dare ask? Okay, so if anybody's crocheting along, oh, Joel, to, Joel Tone, okay, so if anybody's crocheting along, I will be changing colors every two rows. You don't have to change colors with this, but I think it looks better when you change colors. And I'm going to do three colors, you could do whatever you want. So, you're not crocheting along. Okay. That's fine. I will still try to go through it somewhat slow. In case anybody is watching it on the play on the replay. My software's flashing again. I hate it when it does that. It's nothing affecting the stream. It's just every now and then the window that the software I use, it just flashes for a couple seconds. Okay. So for the Lark's Foot Stitch, it is a multiple of four plus one. So I'm going to do 12. Actually, no, I'm not going to do 12. I'm going to do... 24. Let's make it wider. I think that's that's 24. Somewhere around there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 23, 24. That is our multiple of four plus one additional for turning. So the first row is in the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four. In the fourth chain, you're going to do a double crochet. And in the next chain, you're doing a double crochet. Let me zoom in a little bit. Wait a minute. Adjust my camera. So again, we've done our multiples of four plus one. In the fourth chain, we've done a double crochet. And in the next chain, we do a double crochet. So that equals three double crochets. Now you're going to chain one. And then you're going to skip one of your foundation chains. And then the next three foundation chains, in each of those, you're going to do a double crochet. Great. So you've got three double crochets. You got a chain here, but you've also skipped the chain on your foundation. And does that look a little blurry to you? Let's see if it's better if I turn. I think it's the white yarn. You got three double crochets. You've got a chain there, but you also skip its foundation chain. And in the next three, each get a double crochet. And that is your pattern till the till the end. So now we're going to chain one, and then our foundation, we're going to skip one, and then in the next one, you're going to do a double, and the next one after that, you're going to do a double, and the one after that, you're going to do a double. Now we're going to chain one, skip a foundation chain, and then the next foundation chain do a double, in the next chain do a double, and 
and in the third chain do a double. So they're just groups of double crochets, three in each, separated by a chain. So chain one, skip our foundation chain, in the very next one, we're gonna do a double, in the next one do a double, and in the third one, do a double. Once you get to the end here, you should have four chains. So now we're gonna chain one, skip the next foundation chain, and each of the next three chains, they're each gonna get one double crochet. And that is your first row. To recap, we have our multiple four plus one chains. And then the fourth chain, we're gonna do a double. The next chain, do a double. So that counts as three doubles. Chain one, skip a foundation, and the next three, each get a double. And that's your your, your repeat for the entire row. It's real easy for that, that first row. Row two is you're going to chain three and turn your work. That chain, the turning chain, counts as a double crochet. So we're going to skip this stitch here, and in the next two stitches, each of those are going to get a double. So now we have three doubles. Now we're going to chain one, and then each of the next three doubles are going to get a double. So you're basically doing the exact same thing that you did in the first row. You're skipping that chain, and then the double, you're going to put a double. In the next double, put a double. And then the last double, you're going to put a double. Got to get some slack on my yarn. Now we're going to chain one. Skip that chain from the row below. And in the next three double crochets, each one will get one double crochet. Chain, skip the chain from the row below, and each of the next three will get a double. Nearing the end, we're going to chain one, skip the chain from the previous row, and each of the three doubles from the previous row will get a double crochet. at the end now. So we're going to chain, skip the chain from the previous row, and you're going to put a double crochet in the first stitch, a double crochet in the next stitch, and then the very last stitch here is your turning chain. So you're going to go in, usually if you can, try to put it in the top of the stitch, of the, of the, the turning chain. Mine's a little tight, so I'm gonna go into this hole, the space here. It's still gonna be okay. So, second row is the same as the first row. Oh, I'm, take that back. That last stitch we're not gonna complete, I'm sorry. So you're gonna do a double crochet, but you're only gonna do partial, because now we're going to change colors. So I'm going to clip my tail, and we're changing over to this green color.
to join as usual. Okay. Row three is where the pattern really shows up. So you're going to chain four, turn your work. That counts as a double crochet and one chain. We're going to skip this chain. Not chain. Um, we're going to skip. Okay. So we're going to skip here. And we're going to skip here. We're going to go into the third double crochet of that grouping. And in that third one, we're going to put one double. So that's kind of made the space here. So in the third from the right, we're going to put a double. Now we're going to do a special stitch. This special stitch is called a double crochet spike stitch. So we're going to wrap like a double. And we're going to go down two rows. This was one row and this is two rows. So we're going to go into this space here. So this is one row. We're going to go down to the second row. We bring up a loop. So again, we're going to go into that hole. Bring up this loop from the back. And bring it up forward. And then we're going to pull it up tall. You don't want it real tight because the whole thing's all going to be all uh, twisted. And then you're going to this loop is going to be much taller than your a normal double crochet. And then you're just going to finish your crochet, your double crochet. Yarn over through two, and yarn over through two. That is a double crochet spike stitch. Then in the next double crochet that we come to, we're going to put a double. So that's going to be our double crochet spike stitch cluster. You have your spike, and then on either side, you'll have a double crochet. And now we're going to chain one. We're going to skip the next stitch, but in the second stitch, put a double crochet. And now we're going to do our double crochet spike again. So we're going to wrap our yarn. Go into the second row below. So this is our first. This is our second. Bring up a loop. And then pull it up tall. Just like that. Yarn over through two. Yarn over through two. We've created our double crochet spike stitch. And then the next double crochet we come to, which is in our next grouping, we'll put a double crochet. So anywhere we have these spaces here, these open holes, that's where the spike stitch will go. So after we form our cluster, our grouping, I should say, chain one, we're going to skip the next stitch, and in the second stitch we come to, put it in a double. And now we're ready for another spike stitch. Wrap our yarn, go in two rows below into that hole, bring up a loop, pull the loop up tall, yarn over through two, yarn over through two, and then on our next stitch we come to, which is a double crochet, put in a double. That's the repeat of this row. I know you're not crocheting along, but does that all kind of make sense if you're following along? Then we chain one, skip the next stitch, and in the very next stitch, do a double. That's the beginning of our grouping. We're going to yarn over, drop down two rows. Bring up the loop, but bring it up tall. Yarn over through one, and yarn over through two. And then do another double into the next double of the next grouping from the row below. And we've created our, our next grouping. 
chain one, skip a stitch, and in the second stitch you come to, put a double. And now we're ready for our next spike stitch. Wrap our yarn, go in two rows below, pull up a loop, but break, make the loop tall so it's about the same height as your uh, the row you're working on. Yarn over through two, yarn over through two, just like a double crochet, it's just the loop is extended. And in our next stitch, put in a double. And when we get to the end here, um, wait a minute. Kinda, yeah, kinda. Instead of going in like the front post or the back post, you're going in these spaces. So when we go, that pattern's not written right. Okay, so now we're gonna chain one. I mean, look. Okay, so we chain one, and now we're going to do a double crochet into the top of the turning chain, because we're at the edge here. So the chain one, is we're creating a hole here. So we chained one and we're skipping the next stitch and now we're gonna work a double crochet into the top of our turning chain. Go into the very top, into the stitch if possible. And that's a double crochet. So we've got the turning chain here is technically a double crochet plus a chain to form our hole. Then we've got our Grouping separated by a chain. And again, a grouping is a double, then the double crochet spike, and then a double. So that's row three. Now row four, you're gonna chain four, turn the work. This row, row four, is the same as row two. So row four, we're going to go into the very first double crochet. So we're skipping all of those holes here. Again, we chained four, which that counts as a double crochet plus a chain. And we're going to do a double crochet into each of the next three stitches, each of these three double crochets. It's one, two, and three. And all we did is basically, this right here is the Lark's foot. And we've just, if it's a foot of like, it's, I guess it's to mimic the, the foot of a bird. I guess these are the claws. And what we just did, those three there is like the breast of the foot, the back part of the foot. So now we're gonna chain one, and then we're gonna do the same thing. In the next three stitches, they're each gonna get a double crochet. The even numbered rows are the easy ones. So now we're going to chain one, and then we're going to do three double crochets, one in each of the each of the double crochets from the previous row. And then chain one. Just continue that pattern. Chain one, and then we're gonna go do three doubles in a row, each in their own stitches. We're not doing any, nothing's going into the same stitch. They're all just standalone. And then when we get to the end here, we're gonna chain one, and then we're gonna do a double crochet into the top of this turning chain. So remember the turning chain here, we had four double crochets, I mean, four chains, one, two, three, four. That counts as a double crochet plus a chain. So we're gonna find the third one up. One, two, three, the third one up, and we're gonna stitch into that third one. 
where we're going to do a double crochet. So we find our third chain, go through, yarn over through two, and now we're going to hold because we're switching colors. Because again, every two rows, we're going to change colors, just like our sample here, every two rows. Clip our yarn, and now I'm going to use this tan color. Hopefully it's going to show up on camera for everybody. Okay, so that was row four. Now we're doing row five. This one we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and turn our work. That counts as a double crochet. Now we have these holes here. And now we're going to do our spike stitch. Because the way the pattern works, these Spike the spike stitches here are going in these holes. Well, now we have these holes here that are, they're offset. So that is wherever you're going to have these chain space gaps is where the double crochet spike stitch will go. So instead of our spike stitch here, it's going to be off to the side of it. So we're going to yarn over, go down two rows below, bring up the loop. Pull it up tall, yarn over through two and through two. And again, the next stitch gets a double. After you do your grouping, you're gonna chain one, and then in you're gonna skip a double crochet, and in the next double crochet, that will get a double crochet. And now we have these chain hole these chain spaces, and that is where our spike is going to go. Always bring up the loop tall. And then in the next stitch, gets a double crochet. Chain one, skip a stitch, and in the next stitch, gets a double. And now we've come to the sections with the large holes. That gets the spike stitch, bring it up tall, and then in the next stitch, we'll get a double. Chain one, skip a stitch, and then the next stitch gets a double. And anytime we skip a stitch, when we chain one and skip, and that is where on the next row, well, not the next row, the next color we do, the spike stitch will go into that. Now we got to make a spike stitch into here. Bring it up, you know, bring up the loop, pull it up tall, through two and through two, and in the very next stitch, do a double, chain one, skip a stitch, and in the next stitch, do a double. This yarn is splitting a little bit. And I think there might be a little bit of wool to this, or it might be just an old yarn. It's a little on the scratchy side. So we made our double, and then we've come to our holes for the spike stitch. Go in, bring up the loop, pull it up tall, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. And in the next stitch, we're doing a double, chain one, Skip a stitch, and in the next stitch, we're doing a double. And now we have holes again, so that means we got to do our spike. Try to make it tall. And then over here, where we have our turning chain, in the top of it, however we can get it, preferably in the third one from the the bottom of that row, so here's the bottom of the row, the third one, we're going to do a double. And that is row five. Row six is just like two and four. Row six, we're going to chain three. Turn our work. 
And each of these three stitches are going to get, well, that counts as one double crochet. So the next two stitches are each going to get a double crochet. Chain one. And each of the next three stitches will get a double. Chain one. Each of the next three are getting a double. If you notice, we're, we're chaining one, doing three doubles. Chaining one, doing three doubles. That sounds a lot like a granny square. It's This is not a granny square, but it's that same pattern. Of the classic granny clusters. So this row is kind of like a granny, but not really. And that's the pattern. You chain one, and then you do three individual doubles, chain one, and then the next three stitches each get one double. Chain one. And we got three stitches here. They're each going to get, oh, not a triple. Each going to get a double. I'm at the edge here, so we have a turning chain to work into. And work into the third chain, the top of the chain, so the third chain. And that right there is the lark's foot stitch. The repeat is, after you do all of this, you re repeat rows three, four, five, and six. So the next time... The next row, the lark's foot pattern will be in line with this. So the, the spike stitch, the spike stitch will be in here. So every other, think of it, of the color changes. The color changes would be the green here. Let's say we're going to do whatever color, let's say white. So if we do white here, they're going to be lined up with the green with the green brown. This would be really good if you've got scraps where each row or each every two rows is a different color, but all the colors coordinate because you change them every two rows and. I'm going to put it like this, so you can kind of see. I don't know if it if the dark color affects it, but it's interesting. It's, it's very different, and the back looks the same as the front, so there really is no right or wrong side to this. That's a large foot stitch. And that is the first stitch of Animal April, because like I said, all of our stitches this month are having an animal name in them for whatever. That's just the way I was picking stitches and, oh, saw that a bunch of them had animals. So that's what we've, uh, Animal April, yep, that's what I'm just calling it. I don't know. What the heck. <laughs> but you can see how you've got... This is more contrasting colors, and you see how they would pop. Yeah, you could do a temperature blanket. The problem is, if you do a temperature blanket in Lark's foot, I would not do a year. I would not do a year because your row, your ever two rows are going to be really tall. And if you do... Um, you change colors like this every two rows is a different day. You're gonna have a very long blanket, so I would do a, a smaller, like a, like a few months. That would work really nice with that Christmas assortment I got recently dark olive, cranberry, bright green. Yes, yeah, that would definitely work. Oh, yeah, yeah, just for one season, yeah, just for like a few months. 
So, something different. Okay, are we ready for the meme of the stream? And let me move a sample. Okay, that's... Oh, and I have you know, I was, well, I was prepared. I'm very prepared this week. I had that one done the other night, and I had Thursday nights, this coming Thursday nights, sample made, and I have Saturday sample made, and I had the first sample for gra for Granny Week made. I'm like, I'm on it tonight, this week. I'm ready for the meme whenever you're ready for the meme. Check something real quick while she's getting that. Okay. My crochet brings all the girls to the yard, and they're like that pattern looks hard. They're right. It really is hard. Help. <laughs> That's funny. You and your memes. Well, I gotta move, reposition everything. Yeah, don't ask me to sing. Yeah. Please don't. Please, please don't. Okay, I haven't worked on the shawl since. Actually, I'll no, take that back. The other night, I did do. Two more. Oh, I got to zoom out on this. The other night, I did do two, the two more rows to finish the repeat of the shawl. So, where are we at now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have nine repeats. Let's... And let's hope tonight we don't have any frogging. Let's hope. Fingers crossed. I was doing so good with this the other night. And... So I'm uh, going to be looking for... Blanket patterns for the um, charity marathon when I reach 100 followers. So if anybody has any suggestions, I've got a bunch of really thin, it's probably a size three weight, three, um, baby blue, baby yarn. I'm thinking about using that. Everyone get your fingers ready to hit that. No, no, we're not. We're not going to do the ribbit. We're not doing the frogging. So, Clay Mika, you said you need to go to the craft store to get some fangs. Um, care to elaborate? Told my mom we're going to the Frederick Fiber Festival, and she asked me if they were selling different kinds of fiber-filled food. 
<laughs> there might be. There might be. <laughs> Yeah, there might be some oats and quinoa, celery. Yeah, I don't think um, funnel cake is uh, considered a high fiber food. <laughs> So were other in here? What? I'm confused. Want, need hairpin lace loom and something to make Easter egg. Okay, you're not going to find the hairpin lace loom at a craft store locally. I highly doubt that. Um, I mean, you might. But that's something you're probably going to have to get on like Amazon. It's It's like Tunisian. Tunisian hooks aren't really, they're popular, but they're not as common and popular compared to uh, regular crochet. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, a local yarn store might have a hairpin lace loom. But you might just be best... Um. Buying one on Amazon because they might be expensive at a LYS. I think the one I have is a Doris brand. No, it's a boy. It's a no, no, it's a Susan Bates. It's a Susan Bates brand. It doesn't matter what brand they are. Heck, if you were uh, crafty enough, you can probably make one somehow. Hey there, Nora Fairy. They might. Now, if you wanted to wait, and I don't know how what the price is going to be, there's a possibility that, um, You can find one at one of the festivals, maybe. Oh, hairpin lace. Give me one second till I can get to a little bit of a stopping point. I still have my sample form from the other week. Yeah, I will. Give me one second. Let me I'm gonna finish this stitch right here. This is a good stopping point. It looks more complicated than it is, and my sample is not the best. Mine's a little rough, and it would probably look better if... Oh, that's all. That all got distorted. 
Give me a second. Okay, don't mind the ends. It would probably look better if they were similar colors. This here, I'm zoomed out as much as I can. That is hairpin lace. So it's a technique that you do on a hairpin lace loom, and it's a way, it's real easy. You, it's a certain way that you wrap, you wrap up the strand around, and you just do a single crochet in the center here, but you've got extra loops on either side. And then, yeah, I can zoom in. So like right here, or between my thumbs, that it, those are all they are, is single crochets, but it's a way that you do it. You, you wrap them a certain way and you do a single crochet and you flip, you, you move the, the hook, the crochet hook to the back and then you flip this over and you do it again. So you're constantly turning your, the loom over and over. So you've got these loops and the loops are actually these here on the side. And then once you get it however long or wide you want it, and you do multiple strips, then there's a process of taking, and this is the even easier part, is taking the loops and connecting them together. You're basically braiding, you're taking, this one I did five, you could do whatever number you want. I did five loops of one color and pulled it through five of the next. And then the same thing. Yeah, you could do this for borders, you could do that, I mean, you can incorporate this with regular crochet. You can also just make this into um, a scarf, a shawl, and you can add multiple. So I did a blue one and a green one. You could do multiple of them side by side. And then this here, the, when you get to the edge, there, it's a, the same type of thing. You're bringing, actually I can show you right now. So I've got these five loops here, there are five loops and there's five loops here. So you're just taking these five loops and putting them through the next five loops. So, and it does, if you use a thinner yarn, it's gonna be more delicate. This is one of my first, this is pretty much my first sample at it. And it's kind of bunched up, so I have to, get better at it. Maybe if I, instead of doing five loops, if I did um, a smaller number, braiding them together. So the blue is one. Yes, the blue is one. The green is one. And then I took the blue and green and joined them to get braided them together. Yep. And then, oh, and I don't have I got rid of my sample from last week when I did broomstick lace. And they there is a way that you can connect broomstick lace with this. So it's just a variation and it it's learning how to put it on here, which is really not that difficult to learn. So but these are relatively inexpensive. This is what nine bucks. Show again. I'm not. I'm not. To, you want me? You want me to do hairpin lace and not work on the uh, shawl? I can do that real quick. Okay. No problem. All right, so first what I'm gonna do, uh, um, yeah, I'm gonna do a smaller section. I'm not gonna do a section this long because I'll have to make two, two sections. So first what we're gonna do, I'm gonna recap. All the loom is made out of are metal rods and then these plastic cross pieces. 
and they've got sets of holes. So the outer two you work to get you work in those sets or the next one or the next one. So what I did with this is I used the outer ones. You, if you want it narrower, you can do the inner you, you can change up which ones you want to use. I'm still going to use the outer ones. It's a little bit easier to get my hand in. So you put those like that and you put the top ones on like that. And they you can adjust them however you want. It's probably best to have it as large as possible. Then what we're gonna do is first we're gonna do something called guidelines. These will help keep your your loops, because when you take it off, your loops can get all tangled and ratty looking. Hey, Gold Misfit. So these are just scrap scrap pieces of yarn. They're not going to be in the actual um, the hairpin lace. This is just something. They're like safety lines. So in one of these these holes that are in the bottom here, on either side, let me get a yarn needle. You don't have to use these. Um, I gotta get a better needle. That eye is too small for that yarn. You don't have to use these. Um, what do you call them? Safety lines, guide guide strings, but they do come in handy. The first one I did, I didn't use them, and the second one I did, I'm like, yeah, we're gonna use them. So all we're going to do is we're going to pop it through the hole there and we're just going to tie it on just a regular simple little knot doesn't have anything fancy and we're going to do the same thing on the other side and then the tails of them and that one's a little short my what? We're going to get new scrap yarn. I need scrap yarns a little bit longer than that. I got plenty of gray. A little bit longer. How are you, Gold Misfit? Hey there, lady. How are you? Oh, that's fraying. I am doing a replay of Hairpin Lace from the other week. Put my Hairpin Lace. Oh. Thank you. Um, oh, it's easier to do it this way. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so we're just going to be putting in our safety lines. So we don't have a rat's nest, literally. Well, not literally, but. So at one end, on either side, we just tied the yarn through some of the holes that are there. And at the other end, this, this is gonna be the top when we work, it doesn't matter. The top and bottom are the same, but we're gonna I'm gonna say this is the top, this is gonna be the bottom. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna thread it through the bottom side. We're gonna let that we're not gonna tie anything on the bottom yet. So that's just threaded through. And 
that started through, we're done with the needle. And then take these two strands. I gotta trim that it's a little bit too long. We're completely off off the loom, and we're just gonna do a simple overhand knot to tie the two strings together. And our guidelines are secure. Now I'm gonna use some of the white. What we're gonna to want to do with our white, we want to make a slip stitch, a slip knot, like you're gonna when you make when you do crochet, you want a large loop on it. Also, take one bar off and put that loop on that bar and put the bar on. So now that loop is on our bar. And we're gonna adjust, and oh, that's perfect actually. Your slip knot that you have is going to be roughly in the middle. You wanna center it. Your tail, don't worry about your tail. Let your tail hang. We've got our slip knot loop on the metal rod. Our safety lines are on the bottom. Our tail is going to hang wherever it wants to hang. And we're going to take our yarn and we're going to wrap it to the back. So we've got this configuration. So our white yarn is, is looped onto the left bar. It's going over top of our, safe, our gray safety lines, around the right bar, and behind and behind the gray safety lines. So when we make this, the safety lines are going to be in the loops. These are gonna be the loops. The loops are gonna be on the outer sides. And in the middle is where we're gonna do our stitch, our stitch work. So you're gonna take your crochet hook and holding this can be a little cumbersome sometimes. I'm still gonna use the same tension I used with crochet in my left hand. And I'm gonna hold this in my left hand, it's gonna take some getting used to to hold it, but you want your slip knot to be centered in the middle of your loom. And it doesn't matter if you're up top, up high on it or low, that doesn't matter because this is all gonna slide. It's gonna slide up and down. So you're gonna put your hook into your loop, go into the loop. Don't worry about your, your safety guide, your safety strings. Go into the loop, snag that. Let me move that off camera because there's so many strings. I don't want to confuse everybody. Snag that and bring it through. And now you have a loop on your hook. Okay. And then I got to remember how to, to start this. Yeah. Then you're going to yarn over and bring it through. I think that's how you start it, yeah. So now, I'll repeat that again. Put it in the loop from your slip knot. Grab it from the back. Bring it through, so now it's on the front side. We got our loop, and then we're gonna yarn over, gonna, just like when we crochet, yarn over through that loop. That's on there. So now we're gonna take our hook, and this is the tricky thing, but once you get used to it, it becomes easy. Take our hook and it's laying on top of our white thread. We're gonna just turn it, it's, it's parallel to our loom. We're gonna turn it upside down. So now our hook is facing down and we're gonna drop the handle down to the back side, and now it's reversed. So I'm gonna show you that again. So when we finished our stitch, we're like this. We wanna get this hook to the back side. So we're gonna turn, just twist it, drop the handle to the back, to the back, and flip it over like that. So now we're going to take our loom, 
and we're going to turn it over. And as we do that, we're still holding on to our working yarn. And we've just created another loop. So we have a loop here. We made a loop there. And by turning the loom, we made another loop. Go into this loop here. You want to go into the top, the top strand. There's a strand that goes on this side of the loom and there's one on the other. You want to go on under the strand that's facing up. You don't want to go into the one that's on the bottom because it gets all twisted and you're going to have a nightmare. So you're going to go into that loop, grab that strand, bring it through. You have two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through two. It's a single crochet. After we've done that, we're ready to reposition our hook and flip. So we're going to take it and we're going to just turn it the other way, drop the hook to the back, bring it like on the back side and flip. And that's, that's the whole process. So now we have our next loop. We're not the next loop that we've come to. So we're building up. So go under that loop. Again, you want the, the top, the top loop, the top strand, I should say. There's a strand here and there's a strand on the back side. You want to go onto the one that's on this side. You're still into the loop, just like crochet. When crochet, you when you finish a stitch, you have one loop on your hook. It's the same thing. Go in, yarn over, bring it up, two on the loop, on the hook, yarn over through two. And my loom just hit everything and scattered things on my desk. And now we're ready to reposition our hook. So think of it as a clock. The hook is pointing at 12 o'clock. We want it to point at 6 o'clock. So it's at 6 o'clock. And now we're going to drop it back. And now it's at 12 o'clock again, but on the back side. And now we're ready to turn the work. On the right-hand side, we have three loops. And we have two here. Usually when you do this, you're going to have this, you want to try to have the same amount. So they're somewhat even. So go into the loop, grab, pull up a loop from there. And we're going to yarn over through two. And now reposition. And that's all there is to the hairpin lace. There are more complicated stitches to do in here. I'm not certain how to do those yet. But the key is, is try to get this, that set your first knot, and mine wasn't the, per, the best because it wasn't completely centered. I'm off to one side. But that's also because I'm trying to demonstrate this on cam. And then you just turn it and you just flip it to the back side, flip the loom over. And, and it's difficult to do this on a flat table. <laughs> it's difficult to hold it at the same time. And I'm going to spread this out. You're making single crochets, but you're flipping it each time. So they're kind of going to like make a zigzag pattern. So I just made a single. Flip it to the back and then flip the loom all the way over. And continue. Oh, yeah, you can frog. Yeah, if you mess up, if you frog, you take that out and you pull this out. But then you got to constantly flip over. Yeah, you can frog. So I made that when I made the stitch. We're ready to go. I'm going to redo it. It is a little alien and a little difficult. I had to wrap, I had to watch a couple videos. 
and then wrap my, my mind around. I'm like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. It kind of looks like it's not the same, but it has the, when you're doing it, it kind of looks like um, you're lacing up the back of a corset. It's kind of what it looks like. Finished piece is only as wide as, yeah, actually, no, no. Let's say, uh, okay, the width of each row of each stripe, like here we got a blue and we got a green, that is determined by the width of your loom. So we're at the widest position. There's two other positions. You can have it narrower. Now, if you wanted, you could do a whole blanket in this. What you would do is you would, when you would build up your, all these loops, you could slide it down and you build up loops and keep working. And if it gets all the way full, I'll show you what we're going to do. I'm going to pull my, my loop out. Let's say the whole thing is full, but I want to go more. It kind of does look like bread, <laughs> a cheese Danish. So let's assume or imagine that this is completely full and we, we need to make it, um, wider we want to make we want we want to keep going so what we would do is we would take off the bottom horizontal piece and again there it's connected with the safety lines and we would take off not all of these but you would take off a good portion of it leave a couple on there so they're all they're hanging off and we put this back on So the more you do it, it could go down your, your guidelines. You could, so you could slide everything down and you can keep working where your finished work that you've already done. I should flip it this way. These couple rows here are the finished ones and they're, well, that, that one wasn't secure for some reason. Anyway, so all of your finished loops no, they won't. Even if they don't have these guidelines, they're not going to come undone because this is our starting tail and you pull it, it'll, it'll make it tighter. The other side, just like crochet, when you do a regular crochet piece, if you pull your starting tail, it's going to make it tighter. If you pull your working end, that will unravel. So we're not unraveling that. So then you can extend all your finished pieces all the way off. You can make it as long as you want. It's just you work in this section for the loom, and then you just take more and more off. So that's basically how you, how you do it. With practice, and if you're doing it yourself, it'll kind of make more sense, besides me actually showing you. Then I will show you the second part, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to unravel my sample. So when I join these together, the, I had 70 loops on each side. So on this side of the green, there were 70. On that side of the green, there were 70. Same thing with the blue. I'm taking out, and I showed how to do fringe, but that's an easy thing. That's like a last minute finishing thing. So I'm going to take all my, take that out. So I'm just going to undo all of this. And I'm not, I don't have any guidelines on this. So I will, this will show you what it will look like without having your safety lines. And I will, yeah. This is, yeah. It can be, yes, because you're making, there's a lot of loops. Also depend how wide you have that loom set on. I had it on the widest one. You, they have, there are narrow ones. So this is what it's going to look like when it comes off of your loom. This is exactly what it's going to look like. It's going to look like a hot mess. All your stitches, your crochet stitches, are the backbone. It looks like a spine. And these are like the ribs. So we're going to... I'm just going to unravel the blue one. And the stitches aren't going to come out. 
that is where your safety strands are going to come in, into play. They'll keep everything lined up. It's not mandatory, but it's just more of a convenient thing. So then you got a second one. So we're just going to work at one end. And originally I had, oh, thank you for the follow. And I don't know why my um, alert thingy is not working. I'll have to mess with it later. Thank you, Quick Quicksilver. So when I had it joined um, just now, I had it in groups of five. So there are five loops going through five loops. I'm going to do three loops, like Claim Miko had suggested. The math is not going to work out at the end. We're going to have some extra or not enough or whatever. Do you have a braid them or you could... There are different ways. The, tr the way that you normally do it is you, is you basically braid them. It's not really braiding, but it looks like it's braiding. Or if you've got a, a traditional crocheted piece, you could crochet as when you're making your, you make this first, and as you're crocheting your blanket, your, your, your project, you can incorporate these loops as you go to join it to a crocheted item, to like a, a panel or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three. So I'm going to get three loops of the green and I want to get my tail out of there. We don't want the tail. So we've got three loops on the hook. Okay. And then on the corresponding one, we're going to get three loops of the blue. So now we're going to pull the blue through the green. Pull the blue through the green. And now we got to get three green on the hook, and we're going to pull those three green. Let me zoom in. Those three green through the three blue. And now we're going to go and get three blue. So we're alternating. And it doesn't have, you could do this all in the same color. It doesn't, you don't have to do different colors. I'm just doing different colors for the sake of the stream. So now we get pick up three. Oh, well, welcome. I uh, crochet about four nights a week. Well, stream four nights a week, mostly crocheted. Um, it doesn't matter the size of hook. The hook, because you're not actually crocheting with this. You're just using it as a tool to pull the loops through loops. That's all you're doing. So you can use a larger hook to make it easier. It doesn't matter. So I just pulled loops through the green, the blue through the green. Now I've got to pick up, I'm going to do a few more and then I will show you what it looks like. So now I'm going to pull the green through the blue. Like I was saying, Quicksilver, I stream about four nights a week, mostly crochet. Um, this is just a, happens to be, I'm re showing how to do hairpin lace. I had showed it the other week, but Crowjo Mojo was not here and I'm just alternating left and right. Oh, wait, wait, I messed up. I forgot to go. I'm like, why is there still loops on my hook? You should not have that. Okay. I can't talk. can't talk and uh, work at the same time. And he would say, then why are you streaming? <laughs> okay, now here we go. We're going to pull the green through the blue. But if you like what you see here, um, like I said, four nights a week, the schedule is listed in my about section. Oh, cool. Um, I have a YouTube channel. All of my streams are posted there after I'm done streaming. They're just raw, uploaded streams. I don't do any editing. I don't do all that fancy stuff. 
I also have a Discord, if you would be interested in. That's in the, um, listed on the channel. It's also will pop up peri the, periodically in the chat. The, um, link to the YouTube will, po will pop up in the chat also. Thing is, you don't want to get this, when you're doing this, you don't want this twisted. That's where the guidelines would come in handy. But I don't have any of the guidelines in here because I ripped it apart. Let me get a couple more groupings done. Okay. So that looks much different than when I had it in groups of five. It's a more open, lighter, more flat look. The other thing was it was bunched up too much. So that's all you do. You just pull, you treat multiple loops as one loop, and you're pulling loops from one in from the other, and back and forth. And then it's the same thing for the edge. To do the edge, you'd, put, you'd do three, and you pull them through the next three. So you'd kind of like braid it, braid, braid it itself. I can keep going if you want me to. I mean, I really don't need the loops. I mean, the hook, it does make it helpful. Yeah, the hook does make it helpful to keep everything lined up and nice looking. Bring the loops through the loop. And now I can do the blue. And I'm pulling the blue loops through the green loops. And now I'm gonna pick up the green and bring those through. The one thing It's if let's imagine we had another strand we're going to attach here. When we started with these, we pulled blue through green. So we pulled the right loops from the right through the left. When we do here, we would have to do opposite because if not, if we keep doing the right goes through the left loop, so the blue is the right one, the green is the left. We end up pulling this blue one through this green one. If we do that, the whole thing would be skewed and we'd have like a diagonal thing. If you wanted to keep it square, you alternate. So the next one, if I would have another one here, I would pull the left loops through the right ones. That makes sense. When you actually do it, it kind of makes makes itself clear. You want to alternate which ones you pick up first. But that's just joining strips together. That's not um, doing this part here. This part, you, you, well, you still alternate. Because you're braiding them, linking them together. So it kind of makes, kind of makes sense, I guess. I'm just picking up three at a time and going through three. I guess if you had thinner yarn, you could do more at a time. Instead of three, you could do five. Or however many that you choose or whatever the, a pattern would call for if you're following a pattern. You'll pass them doing this looks beyond my scope of practice. But I'll take a shawl made like this with two braided loop, with two loops braided. It's actually not that difficult. The hardest part was the loom. And even that, it's it's more cumbersome than difficult. The only real crocheting that you're doing 
as a single crochet. Because this isn't even crocheting, this is just... Yeah. <laughs> but the, um... Those guidelines, the guide strings on the loom will keep things all nice and tidy and organized for you. This just happens to be, because I didn't have a sample prepped, because I wasn't planning on showing this again. And I didn't want to sit here and just spend all night doing hairpin lace. But it would look really, really pretty with like a fingering weight yarn, real fine yarn to uh, to work with. Through. Okay, I'm not going to go to the very end. I'm just going to make that loop real big. And there, you can kind of see, once you pull it out like that, and then imagine another one here and another one there, braided so you'll have the braid and then you'll have the stitch so it'll alternate and then you've got the the open laciness of it any more of the shawl yarn you mean the um unforgettable guess we're calling that shawl yarn now yes it does have a very bohemian or old world look to it it definitely has a like a very European look to it. Very um Scandinavian German feel to it. That's hairpin lace. And Clean Miko, you're right. It looks better with uh three. Crochet thread, yes. I would go blind. <laughs> I could do a fingering weight yarn. Crochet thread, that's that's almost too fine for me. And I used to be able to work with that stuff a lot. Okay. Let me um gonna Take everything off of my loom. Don't need my guidelines anymore. I got a mess to clean up later. But like I said, you can incorporate this with traditional crochet. I want to get back to this. <laughs> oh, this shawl, and well, you probably know this, already know this, obviously. You don't have to use this yarn because actually this pattern was not written for this type of yarn. It was written for a more traditional worsted weight. You've seen that kind of stitch, but never knew how it was made. Oh, the hairpin lace? Yeah. 
it's one of those, uh, one of those things that is, uh, in the crochet family. And just to, uh, fill you in, Quilks, Quicksilver, I am working on a shawl. This is my third one of this pattern. The other two in a different colorway. This is the Fluffy Meringue Shawl by the Crochet Crowd on YouTube. It's a free pattern. I can't sh demonstrate how to make this because I don't have the permission from the designer. But I love this pattern. It's so fun to make. Oh, I'm at halfway here. I am using, give me my, uh, I'm using Facets by Loops and Thread, which is a Michaels line. It's a roving style yarn, and I'm using, it's in the color, the color Summer Sunrise, and a roving yarn has very little twist. It's very fluffy. It's not um, it's got some bounce to it, and then if, you probably can't see on camera, but there's a slight halo, meaning there's a little bit of f little fibers that come off of it that add to the softness. And this is a size four yarn, but I disagree with them. I consider this a size three. The scrappy single crochet throw I'm making for Project Linus, I was thinking do, doing black eye cord for the border. I've done eye cord but never attach it to something. See how it turns out and may use eye cord for future projects. Yeah. That that that'd be really simple to to uh attach. You just um get a yarn needle and some yarn and just do a little quick little whip stitches to attach it. Or you could even, once you make the cord, you can line it against the edge and do a loose, not a loose, but a open stitch, crochet it onto it. So imagine Imagine this is the I cord, and I would just do a stitch and wrap it over. Like you're, like when you join, like wrapping over your tail, you could do something like that, possibly. It's a lot of I cord to, uh, to make though. Made single crochet spiral bags out of scrap and left Oh, cool. So, like, you work in, like, the round, but instead of doing rounds, you, it's a continuous spiral. I'm assuming that's what you mean. Okay. I've seen that done with baskets. Like, um... doubling up or using a thicker yarn. Like a coil. Like if you've ever done um, ceramics, you make a coil of clay and you just keep building up. Yeah, definitely. Love to see uh, pictures and projects that people are working on or have finished. And the Discord is just not for crochet. If anybody has any other types of projects or crafts they're working on and somebody had posted, I think it was Lady, 
I think it was Lady 1241, posted um, seeds that she had, gener had germinated and is growing. And then my friend Stan, he posted in there um, some 3D printing that he did. He's got a 3D printer. I really, really, really need to find another type of craft or something else to do on stream besides crochet. There's nothing wrong with crochet. Don't get me wrong. But I need to, maybe for May, we will, uh, at least one night, we'll come up with something different. I'm nearing the end. When I get to the end of this row, I am going to see if I made a mistake. And let's hope we did not. Because I've been talking a lot. And whenever I talk, and I don't, I end up not concentrating on what I'm doing. And I don't want to frog this because we all know that this yarn is not a frog friendly yarn because it is a nightmare yeah i don't know why that um alert didn't sound when you followed quicksilver i'm something i gotta work on the back end technical i might have to re uh link something. Normally it makes a little sound that says thanks for the follow and has a little graphic that comes up on my screen. So what is everybody working on right now if um, you happen to be working on something? I didn't ask that earlier. You have to run Phone is dying. Good night. Okay. Good night. Catch you later. Thanks for popping in. Oh, and Quicksilver, um, next week, um, my brain just, oh, every Sunday I work on a temperature blanket that I'm working throughout the year on, and then I will be doing that this Sunday. In addition to this thir this coming Thursday and Saturday, I have streams. But starting next Monday through the following Saturday, so it's the 10th to the 15th, is going to be Granny Week. I did a Granny Week back in February. I'm doing another one next week. But I will be doing a stream every night of the week next week. So if you are interested in seeing some granny squares or variations of the granny square. Tune in for that. Okay, I'll check them in a minute here. I gotta double check my row to make certain I didn't mess up.
half of the first half was good. We did good this time. Okay, let me take a look at what you have posted. I'm going to resize my screen. Let's see. Crochet spiral scrap and leftover yarn bags. Second pick, I was working on it, and my cat claimed it. Oh! <laughs> Thank you for the yay. Oh, that wasn't loud enough. Oh, I like those. And your cat is cute. <laughs> yeah, that's very, um, I mean, it's scrappy, but it, it reminds me of those, uh, braided rag rugs. I like that. So we're going to reply. What's that? I'll do that. Made a dog? Oh, that would be cool. Dog better. Using that. And I can see that's a really good way to use up scraps. So, Grammy, are you working on anything? All? Keep picture. The pink and gray blank for product, pro, project Linus and a grocery shopping list. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned that Quicksilver when you were here. When I reach 100 followers, I am at 96. You're my 96th follower. So I'm really close to 100. When I reach 100 followers, I am going to be doing a marathon stream on a date to be announced. And during that stream, I'm going to be making a blanket to donate to Project Linus. Project Linus is an organization, nationwide organization to help children of all ages from, I think they said, 0 to 10, to 18 that are seriously ill, traumatized, or in need. And they um, accept handmade blankets. The um, I made an, uh, a post about it in the announcement page on the server the other day. And if anybody wants to uh, make one also, either along with me or off stream when I'm not streaming, on your free time or whatever, that would be a, a really good thing to do. There are chapters all over the country. If you go to their website, you can look up uh, 
if there's a chapter nearby. And I know certain businesses, I think in Grammage, say in our area, there's two Joanne locations that will take donations for Project Linus. Let me double check this before I get too far into this. Okay. Um, I don't know if Project Linus is in Canada. Um, let me do a little Google. If I can type. Yes, they have Project Linus Canada. ProjectLinusCanada.org. Yeah, you'd have to look in your area. Croja, you're in the area, obviously. Um, I think I looked, and it was the Saverna Park and the Annapolis Joanne's. But then, if you're in another part of the country or in Canada or whatever, they will probably have listings uh, in your... Um, you can click on your state or province, and they will probably have... listings of chapters in your local area and then where they will accept donations at. But there's other charities out there too, so not that um you have to donate to Project Linus. I just think it's a good cause. I had to frog one stitch. I do not consider that a frog. That is just fixing. They also have workshops and demonstrate how to make blankets other than crochet, knit, and quilted. Oh, I didn't know that. I knew they accepted knitted and quilted and other handmade items. Very cute. Very cute. Quick, a cute Quicksilver. I can't speak. Getting all tongue-tied. The fleece that you cut edges and tie or pop, yeah, the ones that, the uh, the no-fray fleece that you just, you cut, like the, the edges and tie them, that's a real simple thing to do. Hold up. Oh, okay. We're good. We're good. I'm like, did I? No, wait, 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 wait. 
I had to frog a couple. Yeah, there's a couple stitches I got to frog. But it's chains. It's just chains. Okay. If somebody wants to do the ribbit, they can. If not, I don't care. Wasn't that def that bad of a of a frog? It's one. There we go. Um, I have a suggestion, and I sh should also ask Clay Mika because she's in here all the time. But I can ask her. I want this loop work. It's not a frog. That's just a yarn is being a pain. Snagged. So on their Facebook page, they have people who donated supplies as a fabric and yarn, and they're free to pick up. I would hope if someone picked up free fabric or yarn, they would don donate that item that was made. Yes, I would hope so. Um, I was going to ask this. Would showing how to make t-shirt yarn be something that people would be interested in seeing? Meaning from old t-shirts. Okay. So I got a bunch of t-shirts. Saw that they just met March 21st, but didn't see another post about when they meet. It's relatively easy to do. It's a certain way that you have to fold it and cut so it's a continuous... strand and then once you do that once you cut it all there's a, you have to pull it to make it a little stronger that'll probably be something i can put on the schedule for may so question yes i'm in eastern stand yes i'm in i'm in the eastern time zone I'm in Central Maryland, not far from Washington, D.C. Okay, cool. Yeah, I I stream su sa Sundays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Two, three, four. Um, the only exception is next week. It's going to be every night at that time because granny week is a special week okay yep that's eastern made plarn before, so probably same concept on how you cut and loop together the t-shirts. Not really loop, not really looping them together. It's just how you cut it. You don't, you don't really loop it together. Basically, it's a spiral. Basically, if you, if you can imagine the t-shirt is on somebody, you start the, it's, you don't have to do it that way, but it'll essentially, you're cutting it in a spiral, so it's one continuous, um, strand. Yeah, I can show how to do that. 
The only thing you really lose is the collar and the sleeves. And if it's long sleeve, you could probably cut the sleeves the same way, but short sleeves, you're not going to get that, uh, that much out of a, a sleeve. I think we get to the end of this row. I think we're going to call it a night. I didn't have dinner yet tonight, so I am hungry. And it's been almost two hours, so that's usually my uh, time. Sometimes I go longer than two. Fix the one stitch. I have a feeling that maybe I'm not going to hold myself to it, but there's a possibility <clears throat> the, uh, Granny streams might be a little bit longer. Oh, because I'm doing two squares each night. I found 12 different ones that are unique and interesting looking. Getting very close to this end here, and I will definitely double check to make certain I didn't mess up this row. Now let's double check this row. Mm -hmm. Halfway is good. Uh-oh. <laughs> we got a frog half a row. It's only half a row. <laughs> doing good. I was doing so, so good. But it's only up to here, so it's not... Not the end of the world. Thank you, Crojo. Yeah, I've got a bunch of commands. 
in the Discord, in the announcement channel, there's a list of chat commands that everybody can use. And to use it, all you do is you type exclamation point and that the command name all in uh, one word. Oh, it's useful things. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. I didn't remember where I put where I ended up putting it. Yeah, I put it in there with um the charts. on how to read um, diagrams. And I want to thank um, Lady1241. She gave me... Oops. That jump. She sent me the charts for... Um, to figure out how many stitches to cast on for different sides of blankets for knitting and an approximate, a chart for approximate yardage for different types of pro uh, projects. She uh, sent those my way the other day. I will be adding um, possibly in the future to the chat commands if things happen organically and we come up with something like sad green or whatever. Um, got more of them buried somewhere on my PC. I'll have to find them. They're so helpful for freeform freestyle type of work. Oh, definitely. Yeah, whenever you get a chance, if you want, definitely send them my way and pop them on over there. Um, it's always good to have resources like that all in one spot. That's why I made that channel for things that you can access easily. I'm up. The yarn likes to split. That's the only problem with this. Yarn can be a little temperamental in places. Well, not split, I should say. Um, it snags. This yarn does not split. It's just being so fluffy. The catch. Okay, let's double check. Okay, no we were good. Good there. This is the area where I had to fix the mistake. We're good. So that's half a repeat I did tonight here on stream. And uh, it's coming along nicely. Move that out of my way. Let me see. 
Um, you, I gotta look for something. We're gonna see if we can find somebody to raid. If there's anybody doing anything interesting at the moment. Somebody's spinning. We're not going to go spin. I'm looking. Hmm. What is this? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, once a once a stream. Um, Crojo Mojo. Um. Oh, Night Grammy. Once a stream, Crojo Mojo will provide a meme of the stream, and then I upload them to the uh, the Discord. Okay. I have to watch a. And, and I'm trying to see if somebody. What they're working on. Some of them I make myself creative, just not with the art. Yes, you are very creative. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Somebody is crocheting something in the round. So we're going to raid. Let me spell this correctly. Okay, everybody, thank you for joining the stream. I will chat and be in here on Thursday night, 8 8. Um, Eastern. We're doing the Spider Stitch on Thursday. So again, thanks everybody. Everybody have a good evening. If you're going to stick around for the raid, join the raid. And happy crafting!